Jim McBride is the senior technical leader at the Ford Motor Company for all their autonomous car efforts. We're here at CES, and Jim, you've got your latest baby here. You got the latest edition. Tell us about some of the differences between what you're showing here and what I saw just a couple of months ago. Yeah, so I, I think the primary difference that you'll see is uh, uh, we've moved the LiDAR off the roof uh, onto uh, the A pillar, we call it which is uh, above the side view mirrors. And we've gone from four units to two units. And the new LIDARs are designed so that we put the beams uh, more strategically on the targets we're looking for, like cars and pedestrians. So that's, that's why they were raised up to get a better view and now you only need two instead of four? Yeah, the older generation LiDAR was designed for mapping companies, so it had a very broad field of view. And I don't know about you, but I don't normally see cars hovering 30 degrees above the horizon. So, so these are a little bit more optimized for automotive. And additionally, what you'll see here is uh, on the roof, uh, we've now uh, put a, an array of uh, stereo uh, camera pairs. Uh, so there are six cameras on the roof line in addition to the ones that are interior to the cockpit. So you're getting better at integrating all of this. I'm sure there's more ways to go, but it seems to me you're probably concentrating more on just making sure the whole system works. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly the problem. It's a complicated system, and uh, if the pieces uh, don't harmonize well together, uh, we won't get a robust solution. I see the trunk is still full of computers and all that. I got to believe at some point you're going to look at shrinking that down to what, a couple of motherboards or something like that? Yeah, indeed. They'll all be embedded computers. And, you know, we could, uh, you know, we could hide them right now if we wanted to. But, but to be clear, this is still a research platform. And we, we do want some flexibility for, you know, being able to uh, put in new components and move things around and make the research go a little bit faster. Plus, you're adding it to an existing car. I'm sure when you get to designing a car with autonomy in mind, all of this will really be packaged much more efficiently. Yeah, that's already in the product uh, planning stage right now. So again, you know, emphasizing that this is research uh, for, for the degree of flexibility to you know, prove out the algorithms and the robustness. Uh, if you looked at the interior of the car, you probably couldn't tell it is in production from the interior point of view. That's great. What other things are you working on right now? Some of the others that we've talked to at the show here are talking about redundancy, low power usage, and cyber protection. Well, obviously everyone's working on those issues, and uh, uh, you know I do need to mention that uh, the car itself is part of the equation. So um, when you take the human out of the driving situation, uh, there's nobody there and the power steering fails. So we have two steering systems, we have two brake systems, two electrical systems. So a lot of redundancy even on the platform side. And then on the sensing side, we use uh, multiple sensing modalities, multiple types of algorithms on each of them, so that we're always covered uh, by multiple ways in every driving scenario. That's great that you've got all that redundancy, but that also doubles the cost of it. And that's got to be something that you're focused on. How do you get the cost down? Well. You know, some of the redundancy adds to the cost and some doesn't, right? I mean, the data is there for the taking and so in terms of using it on the algorithms, uh, there's really not any incremental cost there. Um, and effectively, you know, you're asking me to uh, replace the human being, both their sensory power and their brain in this vehicle. So I have to be able to achieve everything that you and I can and then some. And, uh, you know, that does require a lot of redundancy. There's just no way around that. I got a chance, as you know, uh back in September of 2016 to drive the car or ride in the car around uh, the Ford Engineering Dearborn campus. How would this car perform differently than what I was able to drive a few months ago? Well, I, I think from the ride and drive feel, it's the same platform. It's a Ford uh, Fusion Hybrid. So in, in, in terms of you know how it would feel, it'd be the same. Algorithms are you know maybe a little bit uh, more polished than you've, you've seen, but uh, you know it's, a, it's an evolutionary change. Um, yeah, I wasn't asking so much from how the vehicle would feel, but how more capable your level four autonomy is getting to be. So I, I would say the main difference on this car is uh, the addition of uh, the, the new camera suite. So, um, you know, everyone's well aware that, uh, you know, deep learning and uh, GPUs and parallel processing is adding a bunch to the equation and cameras are well suited to that. So we've added some there and uh, you'll see some of that in, uh, in the decision making. So what's the next step? We'll see yet another iteration of this or are we going to see a, a full autonomously designed car? Well, I, I think you'll see another iteration of, uh, of this. Um, uh, what we release for production will not be the same as this. And, um, you know, we have yet to decide on the final details, but, but we're, getting, uh, we're getting closer. Real good. Jim McBride, thanks so much for your time uh, my today. My pleasure.
Thanks for your interest. Keep tuning in. We've got a lot more coming to you from the floor of CES. Mitsubishi Electric can help you build heart-racing, awe-inspiring products with the quality you expect, exactly as designed, faster than you thought possible. We are Mitsubishi Electric. You know us for our quality. Get to know us for our innovation.